So you know what guys, a lot of times I hear people complain and they say, I don't like the live action movies, they're not very good, they don't look like the uh, characters that I knew in G1. No, it's no good, it's trash. But it did serve to bring Transformers back to the mainstream and certain characters, or at least certain motifs for certain characters, have definitely persevered over time. Today will be one of those case in point Examples when we look at this guy. It is the new Transformers Siege Deluxe Class Barricade. And he's going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your very humble host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gapa. Thank you so very much for coming by. Give me a little bit of your extremely important time. Please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it... That's right, you know how it goes by now, man. Hit that uh, uh, notification bell because it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Everything from stop motions to countdowns to reviews like these. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, and the Autobot family. And of course, as always, have a look for me across social media, please. I'd love to interact with you guys anywhere. And this is Siege Barricade. Now, I say a mix of um, kind of G1 and movie aesthetic, and I say certain motifs of the movie have endured because Siege has largely been a G1-centric line with Cybertronian modes. Granted, we did have Hotshot and we did have Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime that come from, really, the Cybertron fiction. But this, this is a very interesting reuse of the mold that's used for Prowl and for Smokescreen and for Blue Streak, except, of course, it's used here for Barricade. I don't like the, uh, like, the bird crap that's on his, you know, I, and that's why I called it, because it's not, it's not battle damage. I get it, it's supposed to be battle damage on his fenders, but it looks like a bird pooped on him to me, just saying. But that aside, because that can be dealt with, that aside, I think that this might wear the mold the best. Although, to be fair, since most of Siege is G1-centric, Shouldn't this guy really be more like a blue race car and an abusive leader for a MicroMaster team? Are we going to get more of his MicroMaster buddies? Has he all of a sudden been upgraded and upsized? Well, we're going to dive into it and kind of compare him to that G1 model as well as uh, his uh, like more recent movie model. And we'll kind of see where this guy fits in and just how good he really is when we head over to the table and take a closer look at them. And here, of course, we have Siege Barricade, and we're going to do the conversion this time going from vehicle to robot because we already looked at robot to vehicle when we looked at Prowl in episode 532. Now, I wasn't uh, as good as that figure is. I haven't been sold on this mold. I I'm not planning on replacing uh, my classics Prowl smokescreen and uh, Blue Streak with this mold, but I do think that if you like it enough and you're in for it with Prowl, then you should definitely have the other two, and probably, possibly this guy. Though, of all versions of the mold, I think this dude might wear it the absolute best. We'll get to it in a second, but let's begin and take a look at the packaging first. And yes, indeed, here we have Siege packaging, and it has a nice image of Barricade over here. Um, you know, your typical Siege artwork on that side, and then on the back, we have the product images, as we usually do. And we have Dandy Siege instructions. I like what they've done with these, but we do have a weird oddity this time when we get to my favorite part. Which, of course, is the stats page. We know that his blaster is very powerful, with not great accuracy, but a pretty good range. But... I can't tell you exactly what it's called other than HF because it's written in Cybertronian? I haven't heard tell of this on any of the other uh, Siege Waves figures. Um, it's strange. I'd love to know if somebody else had their blaster name written in Cybertronian. It's weird. Speaking of the blaster, it looks like this. There's two of these that are molded and they can go fitted together. 
we turn it and you'll notice that there's a like a peg and a slot up right here so when we put two together this becomes half of the handle and it looks like this when it's all together a dual blaster and you'll notice that we have two peg holes and you'll notice sticking out from either side we have the rectangular pegs that are used on his shoulders in robot mode and i'm holding onto the five millimeter peg that in vehicle mode can go here up in the light bar if you're cool with it or here on his hood or as i like it lower on his hood here he is next to my favorite iteration of barricade the version from the last night now we do have the dark of the moon version here somewhere as well um honestly the dark of the moon one is a great figure the age of extinction not the age of extinction the last night one is it's like it's a fine police decepticon it's a departure from what we know as barricade but I do like it as a, like a bruiser, brawler type of character. And like I sort of saw Barricade that way. So I thought it fit for him. Plus I like the look of this police car. Naturally, two very different aesthetics. However, when the Last Night Barricade came out, I said then that I didn't think he was worth the price. He's fine, but he wasn't worth the price. Because that's when we started having the price increase that everyone experienced with Siege. We started to have it here with the Last Night line in 2017. And I'm telling you, to this day, I can still go and put my hands on it at the very least. A Cogman and I believe a Strafe from the Last Night. I can still put my hands on them right now. What? Two years later? Because guess what? They never sold that great. So my expectation is that this is going to be fantastic, um, but he's probably going to be guilty just like Prowl was. Just like the earlier Barricade was. Of course, all that being said, I suppose it's just fitting that we mention that Barricade by rights began life as a um, G1 Micromaster. And since Siege has been revisiting Micromasters, I find it sort of funny that they would give him a deluxe p police car form rather than his traditional Micromaster G1 race car blue guy form. I would venture to say to you because 90% of people know Barricade as a full-size Transformer that's a police car rather than as this blue race car lad. The films have popularized that motif that type of coloring, that type of alt mode for this particular character enough that even when we translate it and translate the character to a kind of G1 mode and aesthetic, we still tend to envision him as a full-size police car. I would be interested to know though if we're going to get his partners in MicroMaster form so maybe he can at least be the abusive leader that they all know and despise. By the way, you also notice here, even though we're not going to give him grades yet, that we do have that battle damage that I call bird poop on his fender. Some people like it and they're like, it's subtle, it looks good. I don't think so. I think it looks awful here. I think it's one of the most egregious um, uh, examples that we've had of this battle damage done poorly. I don't like it in the least. It gotta go. It's gonna have to get out of here for sure. Um, but nevertheless, nevertheless. Besides for that little thing, this is a fine looking car mode. I love the translucent purple. I think it looks amazing. Uh, respectable police car. I sort of like the way the light bar is done. It's red, but like with this blue or purple glow to it. I dig it, man. The conversion, we begin by popping out his little blasters. We'll put them in later, though you could conceivably leave them there throughout the conversion. I'm just choosing not to. Uh, we open up the doors on the two sides and we extend out the legs and we rotate at the waist. We split the legs and we angle the toes and bring out the heel spurs. Lower body done, I'm going to stand this guy up so we can do the rest. With the lower body all nicely unfurled, we can come here and bring out his arms and swivel them out to the side. Uh, we can pull this whole backpack back, flip down what's going to be his tummy, and then there's a um, section in the hood, a black section here in the hood. It comes forward and it goes into a cavity behind his head and comes back in and this whole thing comes down over, or should come down over, his head and 
it tabs in on the tummy. Then we can take the uh, arms here and we should be able to rotate them and rotate them, which I forgot to do, and bring them down. You can, if you're so inclined, leave the shoulder pads up. They do like to move with it um, as well. And he has ports on the top of his shoulders, on his forearms, um, on his, I think here on his lower leg, uh, on the bottom of his feet. There's one on his heel. The guy is fairly covered in him if you want to cog him up or six gun him up or Z tar him up or Cromar him up. However you want to do it. Although he's a Decepticon, so I guess brunt him up. Um, you can see how he looks here. I wish that we had sort of gotten like we have on the back of the packaging. His forearms on the back of the packaging are black. They're not black here. But outside of that, everything else looks pretty fantastic on this guy. Uh, he could hold his blaster, of course, in his hand as that one piece. Or you could leave them as two separate pieces. And they go in the little rectangular sections up here by his head up there. And up there and we could see him next to just just because his G1 counterpart little tiny itty bitty barricade uh, <laughs> if this is your homage he looks nothing like it. he's a zero and fails miserably but I think we have to look at this guy a little differently here he also is next to his movie self I'll say this I love the face on the generation siege one a lot better um, but I, 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 this looks like a police car. This is obviously Cybertronian and somewhat stylized. So, again, I don't think that we can just define him as a movie character. So we can't really define him by G1. We can't really define him as movie. What this guy actually is, is the movie style if it was G1. It's a what if type of thing. What if movie barricade had been a G1 character? So it's not G1 barricade. It's not movie barricade. I want to make that distinction because we have to talk about the paint apps. If we are saying that this is an iteration of Movie Barricade, it's a zero. If we're saying it's a G1 Barricade, it's a zero. If we're saying, hey, this is what a Movie Barricade could look like if it was a part of G1, then using this mold, having him be from like the same location as Prowl, having him be the same sort of mold brothers Prowl makes sense. And I'm going to say that the black and the purple play off each other so nice that honestly, and the gold face really pops. Honestly, I'm going to say that this is a good eight and a half, nine. I think it looks great, but you have to understand that it is sort of its own thing and not homaging anything else. So we're going to say it's a nine, but if you mark it down because you wanted to homage something else, hey man, I'm with you and I get it. What about the articulation? Well, we said for Prowl that he was uh, an eight, we have a nine for paint. For articulation for Prowl, we said it was a nine. For this guy, honestly, it's a bit better. And here's why it's a bit better. Um, we have a head that can go left and right. We have arms that can go well out to the side and down. Of course, the, our shoulder pad likes to move. They can rotate all the way around. Nice, tight uh, joints. Bicep swivel, 90 degree elbow, wrist swivel. Uh, we have a waist on the guy. We have legs forward legs back, we have a super duper deep knee, we have a uh, heel spur, and we have ankle tilt. Um, he can do the splits on what feels like soft ratchets out to the side. And unlike Prowl, when I shake this guy, nothing on him at all moves. Um, I don't think there's anything else I could want. Articulation, 10, it's fantastic. Uh, so we have an, an 8 for, um, maybe even a 9, but I think I said an 8 for, no, a 9 for his look, uh, paint ass wise, a 10 for his articulation, he's scoring a 9.5, the transformation, 10, it's very fluid, it's very nice, this guy's easily an overall score of a 9.75, even Prowl was an overall score of a 9. That being said, as almost perfect as this guy is, I can tell you that he weighs in at 72 grams and that the um, like classics prowl mold will say 
comes in at 91 grams. This is significantly smaller. This is a small deluxe, much like Reflector, much like I think uh, Cliff Jumper is going to be in Earthrise. They're already getting smaller. Hints of them are getting smaller and lighter weight. I don't feel like this is uh, a $30 figure for me. That being said, I already have a version of Barricade that I'm okay with. I don't mind that last night version because it kind of fits the character the way I envision him. I can't argue with someone getting this because it's a fantastic figure, but when it comes to being guilty or innocent, I have to ask you, dear Quintesson judges, is he in fact guilty or innocent? Guilty. Well, there you have it. He is guilty. Excellent figure, but a little bit overpriced. And here we are once again, and okay, so for aesthetics, this guy is extremely highly stylized and doesn't really fit in with any fiction because he's definitely not G1, but he's not quite movie, but he looks cool, and I, I really dig the gold face on this guy. I like that they gave him a new head sculpt. My understanding is that this is the same head sculpt used for smokescreen. I think it works better for a Decepticon because he looks quite grumpy. Uh, I don't know how well it works for smokescreen, but I, I do think if you're in for Prowl, you really should be in for all three. I'm not so much in for Prowl. I'm going to keep my uh, kind of original Datsun trio, but I do like the mold enough that I'd like to have it for someone. Will it be this guy? I'm not sure. I haven't made my personal choice yet, but I will say this. The conversion works a little more smoothly on this guy to me. The plastic feels a little thicker on this guy to me. The joints are better on this guy to me. Um, he has given me a new appreciation for this mold that I didn't previously have. I'm not a huge fan of the Cybertronian writing on the doors, but that being said, I'm sure it can be dealt with with stickers or whatever, or maybe I can just learn to look past it. I do absolutely love the purple and black mix of colors. I love the way that we have purple tires, but we have black on the outer edge, so it it still looks like normal tires, but with like this purple hue glow. Uh, the translucent purple that we have on him, it looks glorious. He is very eye-catching. Even though I was unsure about like the lavender on his arms, his tummy, and his thighs, it actually all comes together and works to make a really dynamic looking figure that functions excellently. Anyway, new appreciation for this guy? I guess it just goes to show that first impressions can indeed be changed now and then. Anyway, let me know what you think about this guy, what you think about this mold in general. You know I love to hear from you guys all the time. If you haven't done so already, hey, hit that subscribe button, please. It helps me out so very, very much. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, there is a donate link down in the description. Don't forget, most importantly, somehow, someway, each and every day, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams at the stop motion premieres or right here as per usual, inside the videos.